And that's the money shot. That's the best scene ever. Being a creative person can be a strange thing. One day you feel full of energy, creative, inspired, like you're on fire and the next you feel like you have no idea what you're doing, unmotivated and like throwing it all away. Happens to me too. Even after so many years of making art almost daily. You never really get used to it, but the good news is you learn to live with it and it doesn't bother you as much once you find out what you can do about it. When I was younger, this roller coaster, as I like to call it, used to bother me a lot. To the point where I was annoyed by being annoyed. But these days, luckily, it rarely happens. And there are many reasons for why. I don't take myself and my art too seriously. Very important. I don't care about what other people think anymore, which we will actually get into in the second half of this video. And I also found ways to make things a bit more enjoyable and tolerable for myself. Which is exactly why I'm painting this handsome gentleman here. Inigo Montoya. Iconic film figure that you may or may not know depending on how old you are, but for me something I've wanted to paint for a while and for a very particular reason. Now, if you want to dive a bit deeper into the painting process, enjoy every brush stroke from start to finish, I recommend you check out the real-time version of this video on Patreon. But rather than the process, I want to touch on why I'm painting this here. Why would I choose to paint this small painting here when I could be painting literally anything else? Why would I paint this character here that hardly anyone will recognize when I could be painting beautiful women that will get me tens of thousands of likes on social media? Or impressive still lifes that I can sell in my next gallery show? Or popular characters that everyone can recognize? Well, it's really quite simple. I have this ritual or a routine where Whenever I finish a big project or I'm about to start a new one that will take up weeks or sometimes even months of my life, I like to take some time for myself and create something completely uncreative. A little creative detox if you want. Right now, for example, I finished a few massive projects, one of which you can check out in my last video, and next I'm about to work on my upcoming solo show in Germany later this year, for which I have to paint 10, 15, 20 paintings, an incredible amount of work. But before I do all that, here's what I do. I take some time for myself, sit down for a couple days and just create something the way I did when I was a teenager or a kid. No strings attached, no pressure, no real goal or reasons behind it. Just making stuff for the sake of making it and enjoying the process along the way. Maybe one of my biggest secrets behind how I manage to stay sane and keep my balance in a world of likes, views and algorithms. And I do this after every major project or every few paintings. And the way I do it is rather quite simple. I don't want to be creative or think too much during this time, so my decision making process is as simple as I like Spider-Man, I paint Spider-Man or Orcs or in this case Inigo Montoya. Now, I gotta admit, I'm a creature of habit. I love my rituals, I love my daily routines, like my obligatory cup of coffee before I start a painting session, so extending this to art really comes naturally to me. But I think it's fair to say that being a creative in the 21st century and coming up with ideas and concepts and content all the time is very exhausting. Not only in my case where it's my job, but for every creative person who likes to share what they do with the world. We are thinking and making decisions all the time. And that is very exhausting and it definitely exacerbates the emotional roller coaster that every creative person is all too familiar with. Spending a day or two turning your brain off and just making seems like a trivial thing, but it can make a huge difference. Making something without the pressure of being creative or good or meaningful is very liberating. For me, it helps remind me of why I became an artist to begin with. And it recharges my creative batteries so I can tackle my big projects, like my upcoming solo show that I know will be super exhausting, physically and mentally, and for the most part, not fun. Now, there are a lot of people and a lot of artists that will say, Something along the lines of, if it's not fun, you shouldn't be doing it, or just do what makes you happy. Or in regards to the small painting here, that's fan art, why don't you make real art? Which is 
precisely why I stopped caring about what other people think. The other major thing that helps me keep my sanity and balance as an artist. But before I get more into why caring about what other people think is a perfect recipe for disaster, I want to quickly thank this video sponsor, which is once again Skillshare. Not one, but the online learning community. They have thousands of classes on all kinds of different topics. You can learn to write, edit, take photos, or you can even check out classes from my fellow YouTube artists here, like Jaza's class, Mastering Illustration, Sketching, Inking, and Color Essentials. A fun, lighthearted approach to making art and illustrations that I can highly recommend. If you want to check it out, use the link in my description or my personal code and since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1000 who use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So I highly suggest you check it out, but getting back to other people and what they think, especially on the internet, there is no lack of opinions and advice from people telling you what you should or shouldn't and what you can or can't do. But once you start going down that rabbit hole of taking everyone's opinion seriously, or even worse, trying to please everyone. You have a perfect recipe for disaster. If I cared about what other people thought about me or my art or my process, I would probably feel miserable all the time. It's not necessary to please everyone. In fact, I would even argue if you do, you are doing something wrong. And it's also not important that you have fun all the time or that you don't feel challenged or any of that. If there is anything that is necessary, in my humble opinion, it's to focus on whether you live up to your own values. Simple as that. Just do what makes you happy may work for some people, but I like to challenge myself and I like to be challenged. I want to overcome challenging situations and I find great pleasure in achieving difficult goals and all of that is mostly not fun, but hard, annoying and frustrating and a lot of work, but in the end it's also rewarding. Honestly, people say the dumbest stuff on the internet, all the time, especially when it comes to art. You can find that in my comment sections too. I personally don't care, but I know that other people often genuinely struggle with this. Take these here for example. Real artists paint from the heart, imagination and so. Not by looking and copying something. Hmm. Oh, this one. Is this a joke? No real artist uses a plan. Artists contend with the unknown and discover a plan is an agenda and agenda isn't art. Oh, what about this stroke of genius here? The minute I saw him put gloves on, I knew he wasn't a real artist. I don't think I have to tell you how stupid these comments are, but this is the kind of stuff that every creative person deals with when they share their work, whatever it is, with other people. I find it fascinating how obsessed people are with labels, by the way. I personally think that when it comes to artists, I'm as real as it gets, but real artist. What does it even mean? A real artist doesn't use a plan, doesn't use reference. A real artist doesn't use gloves, really. Well, if that is the case, I wouldn't even want to be a real artist. Because then being an artist would mean to be absolutely brain dead. And this is not something that's exclusive to artists, by the way. Real writers, real musicians, real gamers, real... It's all really quite stupid. Obviously, most people aren't like this and I also don't really want to spotlight this kind of negativity here too much, but I think it's important to remind ourselves that people have all sorts of opinions and standards and none of it matters to you. It's not and never will be your problem. If anyone dislikes how you do something, it's not your problem, it's theirs. It doesn't impact you or your life in the slightest and this realization is really kinda priceless. Understanding that we can't control how other people think and feel and most importantly that we don't need to is quite essential for any creative person. That said, not caring about what other people think goes beyond ignoring stupid comments or negative feedback on the internet. It's also about understanding that the same can be true for positive feedback. If you post something on the internet and it gets thousands of likes and attention and comments, the truth is, it doesn't mean that much. It doesn't mean what you do is unquestionably excellent or interesting or good or meaningful or useful. But on the flip side, if you get hardly any feedback, it doesn't suggest it's not. 
It's all really quite ambivalent. But it's also not that difficult. The internet is a horrible place. Sitting down and painting a piece of fan art is completely fine. And I have great news, there are no real artists. But I want to hear from you guys. What's the dumbest slash funniest comment or piece of feedback you've come across recently? And what do you like to create when you are by yourself and no one is looking? Thanks for watching y'all. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.